Farm for Profit Podcast. Take a listen, have a blast. Farm for Profit Podcast. Learn about farming while having a laugh. Farm for Profit Podcast. Those walking around waiting for a sandwich, don't be afraid to turn around. We have the president and CEO, correct? Yes, yes. Of Suka Manufacturing here. Our pleasure to have this conversation, Corey. We've talked to Steve before. I think our listeners know who he is, but Steve, remind our new listeners. Probably our, half the audience might not have heard your show last year. Who is Steve Suka? Well, I've enjoyed manufacturing uh, all my life. Uh, grew up on the farm. I've had uh, 50 years straight of uh, climbing a grain bin, so I like storage. I like the farming aspect. Industrial engineering is my background, so uh, whenever we get a chance to bring some of our customers in or dealers for a plant tour. Uh, we really try and uh, blow their shoes off or wear their shoes out on the plant tour I've been known to do. <laughs> we got the pleasure to come up yes. and be a guest of yours and go through the tour. And I, I must say, very amazing. Yep. And thank you for that. You bet. That you was bet. such a neat experience. And, it? and as we hit that, uh, one of the fun facts is uh, we brought in robotics getting close to 30 years ago, specifying the first robotics. But we've more than tripled our employment since we've got in our first robot. So it's not, they don't take jobs, they right. just create more opportunities. And that's what we like doing at Suka. Right. What, what kind of is the state of the union of the steel industry right now? Are we caught up? What, what do things look like? Well, they have caught up. They, they, they were brutal on us for a while. I mean, I visited all our steel mills. We only buy U.S. steel produced. And so, you know, whether it's out of Ohio, Indiana, Chicago, Mississippi, Arkansas, so those are some of where our steel mill plants are. But when they put on the tariffs, we didn't think we'd get hit much because it was supposed to be only on foreign steel. Right. But our steel guys raised their prices because they could. They could, yeah. <laughs> Supply and demand. Made supply and yeah. demand. And, uh, but we always had steel. It's always been high quality uh -huh. uh, and still available. So uh, actually, lead times are just staying pretty steady right now. They're trying to inch up some pricing, but uh, steel's available. But it, it's probably going to be cheaper than the last grain bin some of these folks uh, have bought. Okay. But the pricing, uh, I think our guys have really liked the latest corn and soybean pricing that they've been doing. So It has been nice. I've got to say, we've got like a $650,000 project going on, <laughs> all and <right>. it's all <laughs> suka steel going and grain handling. and Yeah, yeah. so well, it doesn't take much to add up. Yeah, it does <laughs> add up. But, uh, well, one of the big bins we just put up at one of the ethanol plants at uh, Golden Grain, they've pull, they paid for a 2 million bushel bin in one year. Holy wow. smokes. Yeah. Two million bushels. In one year. So, when so is that the one it, it's hard to land the plane in? Yeah. <laughs> you remember. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when are they putting up their next one? Uh, this year. Yeah, they should. Yeah. If it only yeah. takes a year to pay for it, we might as yeah. well just keep stacking them in line. Yeah. I'm just I trying like to that. think of how you put up a bin that big. Like, I, I know how to put up, like, an 8,000 bushel bin with some bin jacks and all that. I just can't, right. I can't get it in my mind. Right. <laughs> No, that's pretty good. So more, more bolts and more jacks. <laughs> <laughs> how many pounds of bolts are in a bin that big? Oh, man. I, I thought you were going to ask me how many quantity. <laughs> They're probably, uh, probably about 200,000 200, pounds of bolts, I bet. Wow. So that we'll see if any of my team's listening and whether they, <laughs> they send me the email to correct that, me. But so they have to have literally, literally truck truckloads of bolts. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll have truckloads delivered. So, yeah. yeah. That is, that's fun. But then yeah. also your headquarters, you guys are expanding because you're growing, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, we've got, uh, we really uh, uh, confused a few people uh, uh, when we started saying, yeah, we're putting up an East Coast building. And all of a sudden <laughs> they go, where are you guys going to? Yeah. And I go, well, to the highway. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that'll, uh, that'll put us over. Uh, we've, we've already had over a million square feet of uh, manufacturing uh, at Sukup, and now this will put us over a million uh, uh, feet in Sheffield only. And then we've got uh, seven different other locations mm -hmm. to add up probably close to a million and a half uh, square feet of manufacturing and distribution. Yeah. You, you have uh, also locations overseas, right? Yes. Yeah, we've got uh, two locations. Uh, we've got one in Denmark. And uh, Denmark's, you know, great country. Uh, it's sort of like, I'll call it the old Iowa, where the farmsteads have livestock, yep. right. their feed, they grow their own corn and market. Yep. And uh, uh, so that's really been... Uh, a strong, nice, strong area for us uh, that way. And then we've had a, uh, a partnership in the Ukraine, so we can touch on that uh, later. Yeah, but they've yeah. had their challenges, but they're 
literally, figuratively fighting through it. So. Well, I think we can go right into that now. What? <clears throat> how are things? It. Uh, half of the guys are in the military. Uh, the other half, uh, they don't like lights on. They like to make sure that they're secluded. And uh, but there's some activity uh, going on there. Uh, as in business. As in business. Right? Uh, limited we've had a couple of actually customers come over uh one of the highlights was uh he he had to meet me on a saturday which i said is fine but it's going to be in ames iowa so. yeah yeah <laughs> so he came to ames and uh we got him introduced to a little bit of football but uh he brought his military cap over and gave that to uh, nick my son okay and then he bought i hadn't even told him what i really really wanted was those stamps Oh. And he brought me a sheet of the stamps oh, really? with a sailor out on the island really? telling the Russians what he thought of him. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah. Somebody yeah. had to have leaked your secret. <laughs> they must. They must have. And then, and that's where, uh, with our, our entire company, people help across the the board with each other. Uh, the Danish guys drove buses to the border, Poland. Ukraine border and picked up 64 moms and kids wow. and brought them back. And they're still in Denmark in hostels and things like that. Yep. And our manager, he'll actually be here. I think they're going to try and hit the show to, uh, this weekend or Saturday maybe. And then they're coming to Sheffield uh, oh, cool. Monday, Tuesday. And they, they've just worked their hearts out. And they coordinated with uh, Emily and uh, some of our, our folks there to make it all happen. So. So all this happens, Corey, because of great leadership. Right. And we talked a little bit about this last year, but it, we can't pass up the opportunity to do more for our listeners around the leadership side. Because whether you're farming as an individual, you still have to have leadership characteristics in order to be successful on your own. Yeah. And a lot of these farms are continuing to grow to thousands of acres, multiple employees, employees outside of family members that really – being an effective leader could help yeah. you become a more effective farm. Yeah, and we and uh, just for our farmers, ranchers, they have to be selling what they're doing, the yeah. products. I mean, you got all the, you know, the government and what they're doing out there. So you, you know, all of us are always selling or marketing. Uh, but you know, coming back to your the leadership part, you just have to have that. People can tell whether you have a passion for what you're doing yeah. mm-hmm. and whether you enjoy it. And yeah. so I, I sort of boil it down to the passion and whether they can tell you and enjoy it, uh, whether uh, you can be effective in selling it, and whether they want to be around you and say, yeah, this is, this is the team I want to be on. And uh, I even sort of tie that back to my political uh, days. I was in the legislature yep. for eight years and Speaker Pro Tem and, and enjoyed it. And that's where people would support. They might not have liked every issue you were for, but in, and especially in Iowa, I think, if they believe that the guy or, guy or gal... Yep wants the job, right. is passionate about it, and enjoys what they're doing and, and listens, that they'll mm-hmm. give them a chance. And uh, so that, and that's, I think, in most of our business, they say, hey, this guy really wants my business. Yeah, I might, I, right. might, uh, I might go ahead and do it that way. We've got listeners just like that. The passion yeah. comes through. Yep. The other guests that we've interviewed, absolutely. Do you think that you were a natural-born leader, or was that something you picked up along the way? Oh, I think it's uh, probably one of those uh, halfway into your DNA. I yeah. think there has to be some DNA there that yeah. you enjoy the, you know, you know whether it's friendly banter or whatever yeah. and uh, uh, just enjoyment. But, uh, you know, I'm sure some of the, the training, the 4-H uh, days and doing some presentations and uh, the woodworking and citizenship and hogs taking them to the fair yeah. and stuff like that all helped uh, yeah. uh, make that and, and you know, positive experiences. So right. it's always amazing how you remember the the bad, the one bad thing, oh, but yeah. and then right. it's easy for all of us to forget the the ten good. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Corey and I have uh, been going through a uh, a fitness program, a health program. Where no, it doesn't look like <laughs> it, but we have. <laughs> we have. <laughs> Don't put me on who has been more successful <laughs> at it. Nope, nope. He's going to throw me in on that one too. <laughs> uh, and we, but part of that we've learned about habits. Yeah. And, you know, the, the myth that it only takes 20-some days to make a habit is, is ah. just, just that it. It's just not true. Oh. What you say, it's like 63 days? Right. So it takes a while to build a habit. And leaders always have interesting habits. Some are yeah. completely same bizarre. Mm-hmm. You know, when you talk, talk, talk about some that wake up at 3.30 in the morning, they go take a cold ice bath before they read their book and meditate and hit in the sauna, 
all before anybody else wakes up, right. to others that are more practical. So we want to talk today about some of the habits that we've identified. Coy and I also listened to another podcast that kind of helped us put some of this structure together. We want yeah. to get your feedback on, okay. on those types of habits. Coy, what was the first one that we heard? Do you wake up naturally or with an alarm clock? Generally naturally, uh, but my schedule's gotten off these last uh, few years. I generally wake up at 3 o'clock and then awake from like 3 to 5, and then, you know, everything runs through your sure. head all the time. And, and then if I do crash crash back, I might need a, the, the wake up uh, sometime out Is there. Is it hard but, to get to but, sleep? Uh, no. No. I... I, 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 I I go, I go, I hit hard. That's so, what yeah, I struggle I, with. I hit hard. I hit hard. So I'm, I'm fortunate <laughs> that way then. Are you the but type it, that can sleep anywhere? I can sleep anywhere. Yeah. Man, I can't air, wait till air, I get to that nothing, stage. Nothing, <laughs> yeah, nothing's better than an airplane or the head on the window oh. seat. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so we're in the, yeah, I've been known that I can sleep anywhere. Yeah. When I get stuff rattling around in my brain, like the day before we came down here, we were prepared, but I just kept thinking about stuff. I couldn't get to sleep. But it was like, yeah, today, you know, excited to come to the Louisville show. It's yep. just, right. I don't, you know, I don't know how many years, not necessarily in a row, but, I mean, it, this has been the premier show we uh-huh. go to every year. Yeah. And right. uh, so, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you're always fired up to come to Louisville. You, you see your, your customers, uh, the dealers, uh, farmers that you've worked with in the past. Yep. Or fortunately, uh, this year, you know, farmers coming in and saying, hey, I worked with my dealer. This is what I bought. Uh, yeah. What, yeah, do, yeah. What, what do I all got here? Yeah. So, <laughs> right. We what had, did I get for that 650? Yeah. <laughs> yes. We had, uh, we could talk to one of the commercial salesmen for this venue last night. And he oh. said that there's over 400 vendors that are on a waiting list to come oh. to the show. So that's been, I've, been really pretty neat. But I um, remember the days my dad would go like that with the show trying to get more space uh-huh. and we used to be in the the uh north wing i believe it yep. is and it's cramped in a space and so yep. we've re- i mean when we landed here this has really been a good yeah. spot he so. actually shared with us they're going to be building a new wing oh they oh yeah okay a north a north wing yep and then they'll end up redoing the they're west gonna, wing. they're gonna take down the west wing and rebuild it oh wow yeah so but 400 folks waiting yep wow. 400 companies but no, this is the the, the pr- premier indoor show. Yeah. That if you want to see what's going on in our industry, it, it, this is the place to be, and that's right. why we bring in all of our product managers. That somebody's got a question or direction, we can right. we can get it handled. Yeah. So this first habit that we were talking about, the the podcast that we listened to called it the no snooze habit. So the waking oh. up naturally is definitely something that a leader does, and probably a lot of our listener farmers don't set alarm clocks. Yeah. But the whole concept was is it's the discipline around if you do wake up to an alarm, don't give yourself the snooze button. <laughs> if that's the time that you want yeah. to wake up, you got to start Set off giving yeah. yourself some good faith. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I I like that and I'm probably a little flexible in the morning if I got a project or something needs yeah. to done, I can, to get done, I can uh, handle it. So, but as you talked, you know, you sort of made me feel on that uh uh, wellness project. I got to get my uh, ten thousand steps in today. Oh, yeah. so, oh you will. Yeah. You can <laughs> do that here easy. <laughs> I, I know. Think you will. Especially, I put the, the bar maybe a little bit on the low side yeah. there, but I'll get the ten. <laughs> yeah, that's no, good. There's a, got some good shoes on. Yeah, there was a statistic that came out of the University of Notre Dame that said nearly sixty percent of people hit snooze. Really? Yeah. Okay. Which is, you know, probably indicative of those in leadership roles. Is yeah. I think there was some research on that too. That just the alarm itself is a very annoying sound. The first thing you do of the day is already starting off mad at something, <laughs> right? <laughs> what is like it's probably, it yeah. sets the mindset for the rest of the day. Yeah. yeah. No, probably true. This is The next one is one that I really need to kind of work on myself, especially when it comes to deciding where to eat. <laughs> or and, parking. And Corey will say, which parking space to oh pick? You know, not everybody has big, <laughs> wide parking spaces like Suka. Yeah. You know who... Yeah, I was involved in the design yes. of those. I said, you know, I'm not going to put up with any Menards-type parking spaces you know, here. Yes, <laughs> that was the first thing we looked for when we came up there for the tour. I was like, are these, are these really bigger than normal? <laughs> they are. <Yeah. laughs> but it, this, this habit's called pre-deciding. So okay. pre-deciding as much as you possibly can makes you a more, a more effective leader. So they say that anytime you have a decision that you can make ahead of time, do it. 
And don't think twice about it. Okay. So, for example, if we know tonight we're going to go out for supper, we need to make that decision now. You got your reservations now then? Well, we didn't. That's why I say we oh. need to get better at it. Because otherwise you sit in the truck yeah. and you go, where are you going to go? Where do you want to go? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Let's look it up. Where do you? It happens to everybody. And that's yeah. just one example. Yeah. Well, I've got the reservations for tonight, so I guess I'm in good shape. You here. are. Yeah. But I'm I, always, and maybe that will be covered, uh, I'm one that I keep reprioritizing. Uh-huh. I have my A list and then the B list, and yep. it drives a few other, drives my wife crazy. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but, you know, it's like, you know, if something. I like that, though. But, you know, if, see, like, oh, let's not be afraid to, and I guess that goes into I'm not afraid to try things. It's like, oh. Well, this has moved up. This is interesting. Right. Let's try Let's this. Let's go after it. But yeah. I do like that. Putting Not only just making a to-do list, yeah. but what's the most important on or, your list. Yeah. Yeah, because this, this one here basically tells about how if you spend the entire day making decisions, and you think about our farmer listeners, that's all Corey, that's all Corey does all day is search for information and make a decision. <laughs> right? Yeah. With a how little may, computer in my pocket. Yeah. How many test plots you got to evaluate all and what's all happened out well, there? Well, that's so sometimes you can get too much going on, <laughs> right? Yeah. Where the data is actually bad. And my dad was like that. He loved, he was always on the cutting edge of stuff. You know, always had the first GPS and, oh, and wow. you know, that's, variable rate planting yep. and all that kind of stuff. Well, you get to the point where you have trials going and fertilizer going this way and seed that this population, this kind, different hybrid and different tillage. It's like the data is crap. So we actually have hired a company to help us do our plot. So you've pre-decided. Pre-decided. Somebody's going to get you the results. Third party have gotten, taken ourselves back, so it's not no bias of whether we want mm-hmm. that product to work or not, mm-hmm. right? So. Yeah, it's a decision fatigue is real. And I didn't know yeah. that until listening yeah. to this podcast where you can just get worn out and then you start making worse and worse decisions. So if yeah. you can, if you can pre-decide that. I'm going to hit on Mondays this restaurant and Tuesdays on this restaurant. You know, if you're a person that always eats out, uh, same thing would go is uh, the example that he made was that at his at his business of where they get food ordered in. They may not know exactly what the choice of entree is going to be, but they know it's going to be from this restaurant. So he doesn't have to worry about that decision. Somebody else is doing it. Same thing would be on your farm. If you pre decide that Corey is going to be the one that checks cattle every morning. Let the decision be. You go on and make the next choice. And let him deal with it then. Yeah. So that could also go into delegation. It does. Absolutely. Was it hard for you to d- delegate? Uh, no. <laughs> Was it at one time? Oh, n- not really. No. I, 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 have a, I trust people. And, and I mean, you, know, you want to be around people you can trust. And yep. so I, I trust people. They generally have an idea where I'm headed to or you know it's okay try and make sure we're all aligned in the same right direction and it's like you know the production folks you okay right this is how many grain bins we want to uh run this year this is how many tons we're going to bring be bringing right. in and we want to use it up and the sales guys know it and so we stay pretty pretty aligned so yeah. uh and we got good folks through so I, I believe I delegate, so I guess you can get a, go out and get a second opinion here. <laughs> well, hey, we, we just might do, right. we might, might do hey, that. While you're getting your 10,000 steps in, we'll <laughs> okay. get our answers. I just know it was – so we delegated the editing of the audio of this podcast, and Tanner, that was his baby, and that was one of the hardest things to do, but to see the stress relieve off of him ah. after he did that was like a real-world deal because he was staying up. And it was like a pop bottle cap. As soon as that happened, we couldn't figure out fast enough how to delegate more things. Yeah. Because yeah. once you get the good, the good feeling of someone doing a good job, yep. producing a, pro- a quality product in our instance, you know there's other people out there that probably could do it better than you. So, yeah, we social media, we editing, video, audio, all things that we had done. Which allows us to keep having fun doing what we like. Yep. Doing what we're good at. Yeah. And keep then hire the out the rest. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. This next one here I think probably also ties a little bit to your time in the political world, and it's called Doing the Hard Right. And the, the guy that we listened to on, the, on that podcast was saying that there's always a decision to make, and the results of your decision are either typically the right answer, which is a little bit more difficult, or an easier one that might not be 100% correct. 
It might be yeah. okay, but you know that there could be something that's more right. Right. And that's hard to do. That, that, that's very hard to do. So, I mean, we're always uh, faced with a few of those uh, as your business and industry is changing. How do you react to it? You've got your employees that are important or if a particular, if you have done some delegating and it's not working the way you want to, how do you make that yep. change as well? And uh, so I think we're all, all faced with that accordingly. And, but uh, again, it's one of those if you're convinc I mean, convinced inside this is the direction that needs to happen, uh, I'm, I'm comfortable yeah. in making those, those work. And, and that's fine as, a, as an individual. I'm really curious, how do you convey to the employee how do you motivate the employee to make the hard right choices rather than taking the easy way out? It's Friday afternoon. <laughs> Kali, I'm ready to go home. And we need to finish this. <laughs> yeah. Should we do the hard right or not? Or the customer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's where you can uh, tell about that sort of dives down to the passion. People that have the, the passion for what they're doing, they're not going to feel comfortable leaving or leaving somebody hanging out there. I mean, that's... I mean, with our like our dryer service during the fall, they know our customers have to keep going, and you know they take take the calls seven days yep. uh, a week, and know the customer has to to make it, or uh, you know, and you know our warranty. You know, occasionally you go, why are we doing this? But it was like, no, this is our you know our warranty specialist. Uh, she makes the decision, and so you don't question it and say this is what has to happen. So. The one thing I noticed when we were on our tour up there, all the employees you have, and it seemed like no one was really in charge. They all just had their, they all had, <laughs> no, not, not, I mean it in a good way, right? Like it was all a well-oiled machine. Everyone was doing what they're supposed to be doing, and I was just amazed. That's right. It's not like there was a boss walking around saying, do this, do this next. It, they did. They so almost did, self-led. Yeah. No, no, that's, uh, they really are, they can make their decisions, uh, you know. I don't think any any of our you know group leaders supervise you know it's like okay make the best decision with yeah. the information you have and let's let's proceed that way and so that's I think they get that feel from all of us at the the plant. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, a culture. Yeah, and right? it, and it that's uh, we had a board meeting yesterday and we were talking about you know the culture and uh, ours is really set apart mm -hmm. and hopefully you know you know. I th hopefully some of those times you couldn't tell who the boss was and who the other one was that, you know, yep. you were both on the same page yeah. and having a regular conversation. Yeah, I think that culture really fits into the next item that we talked about. I mean, the, the quote that uh, Craig, the podcast, stated that for the hard right, you'll never regret doing what's right. Yep. The only time you'll have regret is often when you chose to do something that was easy. Let me take the shortcut. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Typically comes with a little bit of a bad feeling. Yep. yep. Yeah. And it doesn't go away very quickly. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, the next one's called You First Leadership. And that's what I think, you know, when you're talking about getting a, a whole team of people with the passion, that's that's what it is. You know, it's, it's sometimes hard as you grow and expand to not think of, I did this. I, I did this. We talked with Matt at Farm Progress Show, and he was, uh, his answer to the final question of the show was, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, take people with you. Yep. You know, and it was very insightful, but I think that's a lot of the culture you that, guys have. That, that hits it hard that uh, everybody has some good ideas. You never come up with the perfect one the, the first time through. And, right. uh, yeah, that, that analogy is uh, spot on that yeah. uh, you have to have a whole team, and it has to be everybody working together. And it's, it's not uh, an I or uh, on it. It has to be we or how, we're, how are right. we going to get it done. So, yeah. Has the culture always been like I described there? Yes. That was sort of what, uh, you know, that was with my dad. I mean, we've all taken pride that we can go through the plant and everybody can call us by our first names. And we try and make sure we can call all of our folks by their first name and it's gotten a little more difficult these years but that's uh, or, but at least that they feel come hey steve you know yeah. it's good seeing you or you know it's right. uh, I, I was at a, another very large family business but we had an event and uh one of the guests we had with us asked well who's that guy at the end of the table and i go that's the guy you've been working for for 
30 years. Yeah. <laughs> and it That's was like, cool. I go, boy, I don't ever want that to happen, that uh, there becomes a disconnect yeah. there. So That's true. I know, and I know a lot of people. I've gone to work Christmas parties with other people, the same thing, and I go, who's that? I don't know. <laughs> you come to find out, it's the president of the company. Yeah. yeah. So that's a that's a bad yeah. sign there, yeah. and uh, hopefully that uh, hopefully we stay away from yeah. that. And I think you know, again, it's you know our culture is that way through the whole plant, and whether right. it's our you know you know we're bringing in a few more new new people. We got a CFO, we got you know HR directors, and. Uh, uh, supply chain and I mean yeah. and, and they work with uh, you know I'm, sa- I'm second generation uh, we've got uh, five of the third generation working in the plant and working with the plant and office and plant and so right. it's been a it's good that we have a we keep a constant mix mm-hmm. with everybody right yeah Craig Rochelle the, the host of this podcast stated that if you go with it the mentality of I get the credit when things are well and I shift the blame when things are bad, you're very quickly going to lose the respect, the trust, the passion of your employees because yeah. they become scapegoats. So the you first leadership is what do you need from me? What can I get for you? How can I make you successful? If you're always thinking of them first, you develop some pretty strong loyalty. Yeah. Nope, that's uh, exactly right. And that's where uh, I've been known, and some people don't like my short terms or uh, my short emails. It was like when we got into safety homes, uh, our, our safety manager was actually the one that came up with the idea right after the Haiti earthquake, and uh, he asked me out on the plant floor, and uh, at that time I said, uh, sure, as long as it's an 18-foot diameter bin, which was our smallest standard one, and then my later came up with an email he sent down his different things he wanted to do, and my uh, email was build a prototype. Uh-huh. So you know, three words: build a prototype, yeah. and you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna affect us. So, but you know, but it's made a huge effect uh, out in the right. different countries. And so it's uh, one. Let's sure, let's try it, and yeah. we'll learn from it. There's a safety home here, right? Isn't it uh, a global glo- global, global serve? serve? Yeah, global serve. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They usually yeah. are, and yeah. we team up with them at different events. Yeah. The farm progress shows. Uh, We'll be at the Iowa Speedway uh, this summer with one, yeah. and so yeah, yeah, we like, uh, and, and they are a game changer for these uh, some of the third world countries. So, yeah. yeah, but you guys do that with your employees at the plant anywhere. I mean, the, yeah. the you first style leadership is prevalent everywhere. We got to tour the clinic. Corey uh, and I got to go yeah. into the clinic. Yeah, yeah. Talk about one off out, out on uh, what I'd call left field. I yeah. go. I didn't say sure. I said really, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Emily, this Emily, Emily, daughter Emily, and uh, Samantha HR, and they said no. We think this would be important. I go okay, <laughs> so they tried it, and that's what we're sort of building. This year's our 60th anniversary of being in business, and yeah. so we're trying to do a little bit of celebrating with that, and you know, highlight the, exactly the things you guys have been mentioning of everybody working together and the input and. You know, the patents and progress that's uh, been made throughout our country, right. our company. Yeah. Heard you're going to be a TV star here soon. Well, we, yeah, <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to Nashville. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. They're going to, they're not giving me a guitar and they're no. turning off my mics. <laughs> oh, he's just there for the good looks then. Yeah, yeah. If there's no guitar and no mics. No mic, yeah. <laughs> I got good. a question on who do you look at? to as a, like a mentor or like another company another person that who who's steve sukup's mentor who oh that's uh i've got uh just quickly going through and some of it comes back to college uh i had a good friend he was just game on occasionally went to class <laughs> but he was one of those guys that goes he's gonna land on something yeah and he did. Uh, Roger Underwood out of uh, Ames, Atlantic, Iowa, originally. And, uh, man, he was just a go-getter. And uh, uh, quite frankly, I wanted to hire him as a salesman. Uh, but I knew my dad and brother couldn't take him because he was just <laughs> full bore. Yep. And uh, he'd, he'd always be pushing the limits on something. Sure. And then another one of my friends from college, and it's uh, Kent Feeds, but it's uh, Grain Processors down in Muscatine. I mean, I don't, you know, 4,000 employees. Just one of those classic family businesses mm-hmm. that's quiet but just has an impact uh, across right. the country uh, with things. And then a, a good friend, uh, Dan Keo, he's out of Des Moines, Holmes Murphy and Associates, okay. but he's really grown the company, and he, he's really one that 
you watch how he works with his people. They, uh -huh. they, they take it to another level. We think we do a pretty good job, but yeah. uh, he really does a nice level there at Holmes Murphy. Is there like a, a group that you get together with these, these people and – share ideas, benchmark, or things like that? Yeah, no, we always, uh, it's usually a, maybe just an off-the-cuff type uh, situation, but just sort of monitoring, making sure you're staying grounded, mm -hmm. uh, but then, you know, sort of seeing what's what's new out there. Uh, you know, it's, I mean, whether it's like uh, Roger's now involved with uh, Pivot Bio, which I really have going... How's that? And it seems like they're, they're going to have some Because uh, they got niche. seed treatment. Seed treatment yeah. and stuff. So yeah. anyway, so it's like, how does that all fit? And then you think back to yours, how can we be, how can we help? <laughs> so, yeah. It's just interesting to think about yeah, because wow. I, you'd love to say that every idea comes from internally. But if no, you don't no. get out and see. If you don't get out and see, and that's yeah. why I love the show, walk around, see where the yeah. activity are. And, yeah. you know, as Nick and my son, we were just walking around. And, you know, there was one great big TV screen that had great history and i was the only one watching it yeah <laughs> and then another place there was a big tv screen or you know the sets of screens up the wall of, wall of tvs and there was 30 40 people watching that one i go we gotta figure out why some people are not That's watching right. this why am the why am i the only one watching this one learning the history of the company yeah and yeah. everybody else is watching this one and what's going on so anyway right. that's uh that's some of the things we need you know keep your eye out open and yeah and listen <laughs> that's always uh the part you learn right. you learn more you yeah, learn you more two ears way. one mouth yeah two ears one mouth <laughs> you can say over and over again it's yeah. still so hard to do yeah yeah well craig had wrapped up that last one basically by saying that you know you have to show people you care about them but it doesn't mean you have to like everybody <laughs> Which is, that's a hard concept. Was he talking to me or yeah, you? I don't know. One. Probably <laughs> both. I don't know. But it, it's, it's a hard one because as I was listening, yeah. I was thinking about it. it. You don't have to like somebody, but you have to still tell, show them, not tell, like be sincere about how much you care about their success, care yeah. about their development, even though you may not like them. Yeah. No, and that's, uh, I think, a little bit... Uh, we pay 100% of our health care costs at the plant for the individual, the clinic. Uh, we've got some uh, new parental uh, leave program that we've introduced this year. So, you know, just on the structured side, we're doing yeah. some of that. But then, you know, going through the plant. Uh, we learned about the company picnic. Oh, yeah. 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 That's a really we, neat benefit. And we're, and we're going to try and, uh, yeah, do some special things this yeah. for the 60th anniversary one. Yeah. So may, maybe... Maybe we'll get you up for a steak, uh, oh, steak yeah. meal. Huh? That sounds good. At the golf that sounds course. Sounds a little heavier than a picnic. <laughs> yeah. No, and cotton candy. And, and cotton candy. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Dang. Getting to know your, get your price here. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, that's pretty cool. I mean, clearly, Sue Cup has had success. Yeah. You know, you yeah. guys have ran this successfully as a family business, yeah. which a lot of our farmer listeners are running family businesses. Yeah. And it, it's admirable. Yeah. And, no, it's been one, uh, and that's, uh, we've been, to be part of uh, agriculture the last 20 years we've grown the business 10 times larger and it hasn't been on the exist the products we were making before 2000 it's all the product development mm -hmm. that we've done and hopefully that's been part of what i've encouraged is turning people loose of saying hey people have made portable dryers for 20 years we got to find something different with our new one we're coming out with and uh uh, 2000, which we did, yeah, and then making the grain bins, sitting down. You know, okay, what what does everybody like about the grain right. bins? What what do we have to get done? And uh, uh, so uh, you know, John and Brad and the the crew really turned loose on that. Yep. So we've uh, hopefully doing a few things uh, different than everybody else. And uh, uh, when they call into Suka, uh, they're asking for a, a you know Jason or yeah. uh, Jennifer or uh, Liz or John, and uh, they're calling for, or no, I got to talk to Steve. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. you know, but uh, that's, yeah. uh, that's what we think we set ourselves apart from some of our competition. Really? So 60 years of Suka this year. What's the next 60 years look like? Oh, well. What are you most excited about? Mostly. Uh, we want to tie all our, right now, when you go to a, a, a grain bin site where you're bringing in your harvested grain, you're bringing in your crop, your cash for the next year is coming in in that three to six week period. We want to get make sure that we're getting you the best information that 
you can, whether on the quality, uh, what's in your grain, uh, you know, moisture content for sure, but to keep it in uh, uh, the best condition and, you know, yeah, we're, all, we're always scared of the drying, but, you know, you look at your tickets and go 13.6, 13.6, 13.7. Yeah. I would have felt better at 14.5, 14.5, 14.6. are losing money at You're that point. You're losing money at yeah. that point. Yep. So it's uh, one, how we can help our customers. You know, maybe it's uh, part of the world where we're touching all their grain, that it's the carbon sequestering or carbon credit. How does that fit? We're all having to change a little bit with yeah. the new world out there. So, yeah. Uh, it's still uh, tying through, and as long as I can do my everything on an iPhone, I'm okay. Yeah. So in all reality, the grain is kind of, I mean, the carbon capture. Like that's the benefit, or that's the result. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's yep. little carbon that's credits. True. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. So that's what we have to do, or whether it's then with our soybeans, you know, the crush plants that's going up of how they're going to do it, or uh, the biofuels. Yeah. So, do you oh. still get, uh, this is off the wall, do you still have some ties to the political system? Are you still informed more than Yeah, well, Kentucky, uh, I, I get together with Rand Paul a couple of times okay. a year. So uh, Senator Paul, I, libertarian, so it yeah. sort of fits my model a little bit uh, more. So I always appreciate his uh, mm-hmm. uh, comments uh, with things. And uh, so, yeah, we, ta- we, we still s- they act. Have you been so. briefed on all these balloons that we're shooting down? <laughs> well, I was disappointed we didn't have one here so that we could motor around, <laughs> check out the competition. I, 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 th- just, I, th- yeah. I think you're on to something there, like Corey, for us. Yeah, see what everybody else is doing. It feels like we're leave it, living in a simulation of some sort. Like, or, you know, they want us to see these things over here. What are they doing over here that we're I'm not just, I'm just at? waiting for the weather channel to go, I'm sorry, all of our weather balloons have gone <laughs> yeah. down. <laughs> Yeah, we don't know if it's going to snow today or not. Yeah, <laughs> there was this F-16. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they missed the first time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and they yeah. got it the second time. That's right. It's only a yeah. million-dollar missile. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. This has been a pleasure, hey. as, as always. But we always have yeah. one question to ask at the end of the show. So I'll give you All a right. chance to think about it while okay. I summarize what we talked and about. Last year it was a different question. Yeah. Okay. So what does success look like to you? It doesn't have to be the success of Suka. It doesn't have to be anything about business. Just the question we've been asking everybody is, what does success look like to you? But okay. listeners, we were talking here with Steve, uh, CEO of Suka. We got to talk to him about the same time last year. Mm-hmm. And we're adding on top of the topic of leadership. We talked about habits, what things that we can generate. The habit of no snooze, making sure you start your day off correctly. Doesn't mean it has to start at 3 in the morning. But the idea of starting off on a a positive foot, pre-deciding, which can be interpreted so many different ways, but if you can make less choices, you'll have less fatigue and therefore make better choices down the road. Doing the hard, right things, not taking the easy way out, you'll more than likely have regret if you choose to go the easy way versus making the right, hard decision. And you first leadership, something that... Sukup Manufacturing does very well is making sure that their employees are put first, their needs, their wants, their desires, and the things that they may not even realize they need or would make their quality of life better, they do all together in general. So that was a little summary as to what we covered here. Steve, what does success look like to you? Well, to me, it's uh, one that people want to be around you. Uh, I'll use a couple examples as you threw that one out there. Uh, a month ago, I had the opportunity. We we're going to take 10 days off, and uh, uh, we'd never done a. My wife and I had never done a catamaran sail down oh, in the Bahamas. Very cool. And so, and I, I was all game on. I've got a scuba license and stuff, so I sure. love water. Uh, but we had a few people we asked. That, oh, we got this going on, this going on, and then I had another group. I just sent out the email to, and immediately responded, "Let's do it." Yeah. And so it was like. Man, I like that uh, responsiveness. And so it's a little bit like the plant, too. You know, uh, we've got a manager, too, that does the all call. Hey, can you come to my office? You know, da-da-da. And it's like, I've never done an all call. I've never done a, a deal for somebody to come to my office. I just have a steady stream of people going, hey, what do you think? I'm working on this. Sure. And and trying to be that you know, reinforcement or just say, yeah, that's the, that's the direction. Go with it, and uh, let's see how it uh goes so yeah. i guess uh business wise that people just show up in your office and say hey what do you think yep. and uh, uh you got that going and then for the off hours that people sort of want to hang with you so 
That's Very a good nice. answer. Yeah. I like that. Very good. Yeah. Absolutely. Corey, do you have a challenge? Yeah, it's going to be out of this, I would say, kind of that going around the terms of ra- thinking of the people around you, maybe not even necessarily in business. Maybe it's your friends. Maybe it's your family. Raise them. Think about them because a the better them is going to bring you up as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like that. That was good. Yeah. This was a pleasure. Steve. Hey, hey. Sue Cup, Sue Cup What's the best way for people to look up your products, put an order in if they want? Go to the website? Go to the website. We've got all our dealers listed. And uh, through all of our, uh, between myself, Charles, Emily, Matt, Nick, okay. the our whole crew there, dealer calls in. They're asking for us by name. The, the dealer will have said, yeah, I just talked to them within the last month or so. Yeah. So anyway. Good. No, that's great to hear. And again, thanks for letting us come hang right. out with you at Nash Farm Machinery. Oh, so. this, yeah, this has been perfect. Yeah. So we've loved you the past couple of years, yeah. and so we'll we'll keep putting the game plan together. We'll be with you at farm, right. farm Progress and Husker Harvest. Too, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Listeners, and until next time, have a good one.